Endres and Hauser presents the following instructional video on the programming and installing of the ProSonic Flow Clamp-on Ultrasonic Flow Meter. A location for mounting the sensors has to be established. It should have sufficient upstream straight run of pipe amounting to a minimum of 15 pipe diameters after a 90 degree bend and more for other obstructions. Locate the sensors on a vertical run of pipe or on the side of the pipe. Avoid top and bottom of a horizontal pipe due to entrained gas or solids accumulating. For a suitable location has been found, the transmitter will need to be electrically connected according to the diagram in the written instruction manual. Begin the programming of the ProSonic flow meter by pushing the E button. This button is used to initiate the programming sequence and later for confirming selections. The plus and minus buttons are used to access the various selection options. After entering into programming, select Quick Setup or Sensor Setup. Text displayed will depend on the ProSonic flow device employed. After entering the setup routine, confirm again that you wish to enter the sensor setup. The first programming change requires an access code for which the device model number is the default. Then enter the liquid being measured. Various options are available. If your particular liquid is not listed, simply choose the option Others. The temperature for normal operations is then to be entered. If temperature varies during operations, enter an average temperature value. The sound velocity of the liquid is then displayed for the normal operating temperature. If you have chosen others earlier, you will need to enter the liquid sound velocity. The material of the pipe in which the liquid is being conveyed should then be entered. Select the appropriate material. The sound velocity of the pipe is then displayed. You now have the choice of entering either the outer pipe circumference or outer pipe diameter. After entering one of the values, the other value is automatically calculated. The outer pipe diameter can often be found printed on the pipe along with the pipe wall thickness or in a PID control drawing of the system or using a piping reference book. If the pipe diameter cannot be found, we suggest measuring the circumference of the pipe and entering that value. Now enter the pipe wall thickness. If this is unknown, it is possible to estimate the value. If a lined pipe is being used, the material of the liner will need to be entered along with the thickness of the liner. If the pipe is not lined, simply choose None. The sensor type is required. This can be found printed on the sensor itself. The transmitter will prompt the number of traverses. The number of traverses determines if the sensors are to be mounted on opposite sides of the pipe in a one traverse installation or on the same side of the pipe in a two traverse installation. For pipes smaller than 80 millimeters, one traverse is suggested. For pipes in the size range of 80 millimeters to 600 millimeters, two traverse installation is suggested. And for pipes larger than 600 millimeters, one traverse is suggested. The length of the sensor cable will now need to be entered. Now all the parameters for installation have been programmed into the transmitter and the mechanical installation can begin. For a one traverse installation, the transmitter will display a sensor distance and wire length. The instrument is delivered with two wires with a flat cable shoe on one end and a variable length cable shoe on the other end. Adjust the cable shoes to correspond with the wire length indicated from the transmitter. The distance should be measured from the center of each cable shoe. Securely tighten the screw on the variable cable shoe so that the cable shoes are firmly positioned at the proper distance. Tighten one of the mounting posts firmly to the side of the pipe and leave the other post loose so it can slide along the pipe. Place the flat cable shoe on each mounting post. Then take the other end with the variable length cable shoe and run each wire around opposite sides of the pipe. Place the cable shoe on the mounting post so that the screw is on the outside and thus accessible to be loosened later. Slide the free mounting post so the cables are pulled tight. Then secure the post to the pipe. Loosen the screw on the cable shoe and detach from the mounting post. The mounting posts for one traverse installation are now in place. To position the mounting posts for the two-traverse installation, the ruler supplied in the delivery will be needed. After programming the application parameters, the transmitter will indicate a letter and number corresponding to two holes drilled into the ruler as shown. The mounting posts will feed through these holes for proper positioning. 
tighten the mounting posts to the pipe, making sure the posts are at the same radial position on the pipe. The ruler can then be removed. The next steps are identical for both one and two traverse installation. Secure the sensor holders to the mounting post. Make sure they are facing in the correct direction as shown. After the sensor holders are fastened to the pipe, apply coupling gel to the face of the sensor. Approximately one millimeter thickness is required for the surface area which will be in contact with the pipe. Now the sensors can be placed into the holders. They only slide into the holders in a particular orientation where a groove in the sensor aligns with a guide rail in the holder. Push the sensor firmly onto the pipe, compressing the internal spring. Then turn the sensor covers so that the closed arrow aligns with the arrow on the sensor holder. Remove the protective caps from sensor and sensor cable and firmly secure the sensor cable to the sensor. The mechanical installation is now complete. To verify a successful installation, check the signal strength from the transmitter under measured values. This value should exceed 50 decibels. If it is below this minimum, the installation should be improved if possible. Also check the measured sound velocity of the liquid. This should be within 3% of the sound velocity of liquid entered into the transmitter in the initial programming sequence. After confirming that installation is successful, the ProSonic flow meter is ready to measure. If you should have any problems, please contact your local Endress and Hauser representative. Thank you for your attention.